So related to this, there are four equations or associations that I see that get set up unconsciously as a result of the incest and the dynamic around the incest. Okay. One, power equals violation. They're all in your hand out there. Power equals violation, sex equals power, sex equals love, and anger equals rage. And the longer the secret is kept, the more ingrained these associations become. The longer the incest goes on, the more ingrained these associations become. And you've got to remember that they're unconscious. Okay. So the first one we're going to look at is power equals violation. Power equals violation. Now, there are two extremely powerful forms of learning that we have. Okay. The two most powerful forms of learning are, does anybody know? One is experience, and two is modeling. Okay? Experience and modeling, two most powerful forms of learning. You get the least powerful form of learning today, which is lecture. You already know, because I see some people's eyes closed, and you're ready for a break. The least powerful form of learning. Any parents in the audience? You know lecture is the least powerful form of learning. If you haven't learned it by now, know it. Okay. So the most powerful form of learning, experience and modeling. What happens to this kid? This kid gets put in the victim role. Do they have a choice about it? No. They are put in the victim role. They experience the victim role with every cell of their body overwhelmingly, traumatically. What is the victim experience? It is helpless, vulnerable, unsafe, and out of control. That is the victim experience. Helpless, vulnerable, unsafe, and out of control. They're experiencing that with every cell of their body overwhelming. What are they getting modeled? They're getting modeled the perpetrator role. Somebody who has power has power over them versus assisting them and supporting them in empowerment. Because that's our role with kids is as adults, is to assist them in empowering themselves. But this doesn't happen. What happens is power over. I'm the one with the power. I'm going to have power over you, which means I'm going to violate you and not respect your boundaries. Okay. So they learn very fast about that victim role. Okay. Overwhelming locks it in. Okay. So there are two things about this. One is, what kind of behavior do we see because of this power equals violation? Because okay? this kid gets it. If somebody's got the power, they violate. That's how people have power. One thing we're going to see is violating behavior to self and others. And it may be sexually violating, and it may not be sexually violating. We can see bullying. We can see delinquency and criminal behavior. We can see shaming and blaming. Okay? Does not have to be sexual perpetration. I don't want you leaving today thinking that any kid who's been sexually abused is going to go out and sexually perpetrate somebody else. That is a myth. Statistics say about 27% of kids who've been sexually abused will sexually perpetrate somebody else in their lifetime, about 27%. So that means about 73% never sexually perpetrate somebody. All right. So we go back. We say, OK, so they get. They're in this victim role. They feel it. They get modeled the perpetrator role. What happens to them is they get role locked in the victim role. That's a psychodrama term. What does it mean? It means that they put the victim glasses on. They see the world through the victim lenses. And the only way they can do relationship with anybody until they know different, because remember, this is unconscious, until they know different is they are going to be in the victim role. They are going to flip over to the perp role. They're going to flip to the rescuer role, or they're going to be in the passive bystander role. That's the rectangle that's on your sheet there. It's the only way that they, only roles that they know how to be in in relationship because of their initial learning about power equals violation. Victim role, perp role. Okay. So you got somebody, and remember this is unconscious, you got somebody who may live their life out as a victim. That's like their identity. Why me? Why me? Poor me, poor me. Can you do this for me? Okay, I can't do it for myself. Alcoholics Anonymous says, poor me, poor me, pour me a drink. Okay? So the victim role for a recovering drunk is not a good place to be. It's like get out of that role as fast as you can. Okay. So you got the person who's the victim. Then you got on some level somebody makes the decision, no way am I going to be helpless like that. I'm going to be the one with the power. And you got him flipping into perp role. 
Every role comes back to victim. Because if you ever worked with somebody who perps, and that's sexually or non-sexually, aren't they always the victim of things? Well, the cop was out to get me. Well, you know, she wanted it. It wasn't about me. Okay? It all goes back to victim. So they do that perp role, and they do bullying, or they do picking on other kids, or whatever. Okay. Then you got some people who say, no way am I ever going to be that helpless. No way am I going to hurt anybody. I'm going to fix, save, and rescue everybody so they don't have to go through what I went through. All right. You got the rescuer. You got the person who's such a good listener all the time. Okay. Anybody relate to that? Yeah. Okay. Why would we be in the profession we're in, folks? Okay. So. Next role, passive bystander, freeze. That's what the passive bystander does, freezes and is not able to take any action, okay? and, which is different than victim. Right? And so the passive bystander has drama and chaos around them a lot in their life, and that's a big pattern for them. And they always kind of find themselves in the midst of all this drama and chaos. It's not directly happening to them necessarily, but they always find themselves in the midst and they can't do anything about it and they freeze. There are five things we do when, we, when our life, our survival is threatened and it's hooked up in our biological central nervous system. Okay? Five things we do and we have a choice of one or a combination of these. We fight, we flee, we freeze, we play dead, or we dissociate. Fight, flee, freeze, play dead, or dissociate. And everybody's got their favorite, and everybody has the combination of favorites for them and what, what kind of works for them. And the person is the passive bystander. That's kind of what they do. Okay. 